हेलो स्टूडेंट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द मेडोलॉग लॉन्गेटा पॉन्स सेरिबेलम एंड मिड ब्रेन सो इन कॉन्टिन्यूशन विद द लेक्चर्स ऑफ द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सी एन एस नो फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस नॉलेज वट वी नो इज दैट द बॉल ऑफ द न्यूरल ट्यूब एट फर्स्ट हैज ए सिंगल लेयर ऑफ सेल्स यू कैन सी इन फर्स्ट डायग्राम देन द मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ द सेल्स इट हैपन्स it and they are further demarcated into three layers from inner to outer side these are ependymal layer mental layer and marginal layer now this mental layer is dividing into ventral part and dorsal part ventral part is given the name basal lamina and dorsal part is given the name alar lamina and these two lamina they are separated by the sulcus limitans now coming to the development of medulla oblongata it develops from myelin cephalon so uh, you can see here so this is myelin cephalon portion of the neural tube appearance of sulcus limitans divides the lateral wall into alar lamina and basal lamina so this is alar lamina basal lamina later on what happens this thin roof plate the widening of this thin roof plate it happens as a result the alar lamina comes to lie dorso lateral to the basal lamina now these two lamina now they are lying in the floor of the developing fourth ventricle cells in the lateral part of each alar lamina they migrate ventrally as bulbo pontine extension so this is the caudal portion of the bulbo pontine extension which are coming and lying ventrolateral aspect of the basal lamina now this bulbo pontine extension at the level of medulla it is giving or uh, origin to the olivary nucleus so the part of the cells which are just coming from the alar lamina migrating ventrally reaching the marginal layer just to ventrolateral aspect of the basal lamina so that is considered as the caudal portion of the bulbo pontine extension the remaining cells what whatever be is the left in the alar lamina after the migration of these cells they just develop into sensory nuclei of cranial nerves the motor nuclei of these nerves these are derived from basal lamina so this is the fate of this uh, the cells present in the alar and basal lamina so this is the complete diagram showing the development of the medulla oblongata initially the formation of the alar and basal lamina later on the widening of the roof plate it happens alar and basal lamina they come to lie in the floor of developing uh, fourth ventricle then after that the migration of the cell it happens from the alar lamina to the marginal layer of the basal lamina now those cells are basically that migration of cells is given the name caudal portion of the bulbo pontine extension and the cells which migrate to portion in relation to the basal lamina they give rise to olivary nuclei nuclei now this is the now next we will discuss the development of the pons so for the development of pons pons again this diagram you can see so the pons is developing from the ventral portion of the meton cephalon now before that i would like to tell you that alar lamina of myelin cephalon in just basically forming or in the form of cranial part of bulbo pontine pontine extension so some part which are migrating at the level of medulla we call it as caudal portion of the bulbo pontine extension and some cells they migrate in relation to the meton cephalon we call them as a cranial portion of the bulbo pontine extension now these this extension comes to lie ventral to the meton cephalon and give rise to pontine nuclei now axons of the cells in these nuclei they grow transversely and they form the middle cerebellar peduncle so this is the development of the pons so but to notice that it is developing from meton cephalon what is the second row that is of the cranial part of the bulbo pontine extension what is that cranial part of bulbo pontine extension these are the basically cells coming from the alar lamina of myelin cephalon then these cells which are cra that is cranial part of the bulbo pontine extension they form the pontine nuclei and what is the caudal portion of the bulbo pontine extension they form they form the olivary nuclei so axons of these cells they run transversely to form the middle cerebellar peduncle so these three important points are related with the development of the pons the roof of the meton cephalon also become thin and broad same thing as it is happening in case of medulla the alar and basal lamina are thus oriented as in medulla so the alar is lying lateral to 
to the uh, basal lamina. Now the lateral part of each alar lamina is called as rhombic lip, specialized to form the cerebellum. The ventral part of the alar give rise to region to the sensory nuclei and the basal lamina give a region to the motor cranial nerve nuclei. So what is important at this level is that we should have the basic knowledge of uh, the tube at the level of formation of basal and alar lamina. In both the cases in myelencephalon and metencephalon which are going to form the medulla oblongata and pons respectively. So what is happening in that the widening of the roof plate is happening. The arrangement of the alar and basal lamina that is in line that is in the floor of the fourth ventricle. Then the alar nerve cells they migrate to the um, in, in relation dorsolateral to the basal lamina. So that is at the level of myelencephalon. Those cells they form the caudal portion of bulbopontine extension and the same cells which are migrating in relation to the metencephalon they form the cranial portion of the bulbopontine extension. So what additional point at the level of metencephalon is the appearance of rhombic lip. So this rhombic lip is meant for the development of the cerebellum. So that we will discuss. Now next important point is which is common in both the pons and medulla is the alar cells they give rise to the sensory cranial nerve nuclei and the basal cells they give rise to motor cranial nerve nuclei. Now in this diagram you can see so this is metencephalon this is myelencephalon clear. Now this is alar lamina this is basal lamina which is going to form the pons. This is alar lamina and this is basal lamina which is going to form the uh, part of the medulla. Now the alar cells which are present in the myelencephalon they migrate cranially to form the pontine nucleus at the level of pons and the part of that is going to form the olivary nucleus. So these extensions are given the name bulbopontine extension. Now this extension pons is cranial to the medulla oblongata that's why the name is cranial part of bulbopontine extension and this is in relation to the pons it is caudal so that's why it is known as the caudal part but the fate of the this extension is that is pontine nuclei at the level of pons and olivary nuclei at the level of medulla oblongata. Then is these are the sensory nerve nuclei arising from alar lamina. So basal lamina, motor cranial nerve they are arising. So same thing is happening in case of medulla. So different cranial nerve nuclei they are related with the different parts of the brain stem. Now coming to the development of the cerebellum. Before that I would like to tell you that some portion of this. This, this portion of the metencephalon is called as rhombic lip which is going to form the cerebellum. Now coming to the development of cerebellum, again you can see this is the part of the neural tube. So this is the alar lamina, this is the basal lamina. Now the, this portion of this uh, alar lamina is called as rhombic lip. Now this rhombic lip is going to form the cerebellum. Now what are the different steps? So this cerebellum is developing from the dorsolateral part of the alar lamina of metencephalon. You can see here, so cerebellar rudiment as rhombic lip. So it is known as the rhombic lip. Now cerebellar rudiments grow medially in the roof to meet in the midline. You can see they just grow and they meet in the midline. Now same thing is happening as I told you the basic phenomena it will remain the same that the lateral wall of the neural tube it, the cells in that wall they multiply and they form the three layers. So here you can see matrix, mental and marginal layer. So the cerebellum at first consists of these three layers. Some cells of the mental layer of the cerebellum migrate into the marginal layer to form the cerebellar cortex. So whatever be the cells which are lying in the mental layer, they migrate towards the marginal layer. So cells they migrate, so cell body is migrating. So that's why the gray matter is at the outer portion of the cerebellum. Now the cells of the mental layer that do not migrate in the cortex, they develop into different nuclei of the cerebellum. So what are those dentate, emboliform, globose and fastigial nuclei. As we know that wherever the cell body of the neuron is present, that is the gray matter. So that's why those cells which are migrating from mental layer to the outer marginal layer. So definitely the cell body is moving. So they form the cerebellar cortex. But the remaining cells which do not migrate, they form these different nuclei of the cerebellum.
Now, just a dip, uh, you can say the repetition of this, they develop from the dorsolateral part of the alar lamina of maintenance cephalon. The cerebellar rudiments grow medially in the roof to meet in the midline. So, next is the superior cerebellar peduncle, how it is formed. Now, this superior cerebellar peduncle is formed by the axon growing out of dentate nucleus. Now, the middle cerebellar peduncle is formed by the axons growing into cerebellum from the cells of the pontine nuclei. Then, inferior cerebellar peduncle is formed by the fibers that grow into the cerebellum from spinal cord and medulla. So, three peduncles which are related with it. We know that superior cerebellar peduncle, it connects the midbrain with the cerebellum. Middle is connecting the pons with the cerebellum. And inferior cerebellar peduncle is connecting the uh, medulla oblongata with the cerebellum. Now, coming to the development of midbrain. Now, midbrain is developing from mesencephalon. Meson, basically, midbrain has three parts, that is tectum, then tegmentum, and crust cerebri. Now, as this development of the midbrain is there, it is developing from mesencephalon. The cavity of the mesencephalon is given the name, uh, that is cerebral aqueduct, you can see. So, this cavity it becomes a very narrow structure. Now, the mental layer becomes divided into dorsal lamina and ventral lamina divided by sulcus limitan. So, this story, it remains same in all the structures. Now, alar lamina. Now, here some differences there in the development of midbrain is the alar lamina of mesencephalon, it forms the three important structures that is colliculi. We know that there are four colliculi, two superior, two inferior. So, colliculi are formed from the alar lamina of mesencephalon. Then red nucleus is formed. Then substantia nigra. So, these structures, one, two and three, these structures are derived from alar lamina. And different cranial nerve nuclei which are present here, that is oculomotor nucleus, trochlear nucleus and Edinger westphal nucleus. This is a parasympathetic nucleus of the third nerve. So, they are de just developed from the basal lamina of mesencephalon. So, this is all about the development of these four structures that is in brainstem, this is the midbrain, pons and medulla. And if we see the hind brain, so it includes the cerebellum too, that is pons, medulla and cerebellum. So, the, this development is related with, you can say, starting from a tube or the structure that is mesencephalon, metencephalon and myelencephalon. And in relation to the metencephalon, one part present in the alar lamina is rhombic lip, which is going to form the cerebellum. So, thank you very much for listening the lecture. Thank you.